Good evening. Tonight's Monday night is our recovery class. And what we're doing here in the month of uh, August is talking about recovery ideas from some of the stories that we find in the Bible, particularly having to do with uh, Jesus and his disciples. You know, I'm kind of looking at the disciples as uh, people who were in a recovery mode. Uh, Jesus is trying to give them a new sense of direction in their life and and through them to give us a, a new sense of direction. And so many of the things that he says to them and he shows them and that he does are things that they've never seen before. Not only have they not seen them before, but they haven't even thought about these things before. It's, it's a lot like recovery. When you enter into recovery and you begin the program, your life has been structured around your addiction. And you have a certain way of thinking, a certain way of acting, certain compensations that we have learned to maintain our addiction, whatever it is. And in recovery, we start thinking in new directions. We start seeing new things. We start experiencing new things that we've never seen before and often that we've never thought about before. And so one of the principles that I want us to understand uh, as we keep moving through recovery is that Jesus is always leading us in new directions. When you surrender your life to God, you have entered into a drama, into a relationship, into a way of thinking and seeing and understanding life that you've never had before. And so many of the things are, are surprising. Uh, as your character begins to develop, you start having desires for things you've never had before. It's a different approach to life. And so the disciples are learning that surrendering their life to Jesus puts them in places they've never been before. And so I want us to look at this story where Jesus walks on the, the water uh, to the disciples. Now, we've talked about this before, but I kind of want to take it in a different direction tonight from the perspective of the disciples seeing things that they've never seen before, but in the life of recovery, they become normal. And so it, it's, it's that process that we have to go through as well, where the unusual, where the unexpected, where the new, the things that we've never thought of or seen before become ordinary. So let's look at the text here. It's in Matthew chapter 14, uh, beginning with verse 22. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat. Now, this is right after he fed the 5,000 people and the women and children that were with him, some 10,000 people, um, with just a few loaves of bread and a, a couple fish. And he divided it and he said, pass this out. And as they were passing it, it continued to, uh, to reappear in their baskets until everyone was fed and there was a, a, a whole bunch of food that was left over. And you can imagine the disciples had never seen anything like this before. And then it says immediately, before they have too much opportunity to think about this, Jesus says, get in the boat and go to the other side and I'll meet you there. And so they get into the boat, as we read here, get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now, there's one of the things that the disciples had never seen before, that after a great event and often before a great event, Jesus spends time with God in meditation. And it's almost as if Jesus is saying to God as he's praying, what's next? You know, what's the next thing you have for me in my life? And I really think that's where our spiritual walk needs to be, uh, be become very real in our lives, where we're constantly saying to God, as we're looking to surrender to his will, okay, God, what's next? What's the next thing you have for me? I mean, we find ourselves in this uh, coronavirus season. I mean, I've never been there before, 
I, I've never experienced this. I've never walked around with a mask on my face. I've never been socially distant from people. I've never not been able to go to church and worship with my brothers and sisters uh, because, uh, you know, stay home and stay safe um, uh, rules. Th this is something that's totally new. And I imagine if we had been uh, more focused upon God and saying, what's next? He might have given us some insight that there's some big changes that are coming that we need to be prepared for. We need to be ready for. And so Jesus spends time with God and says, what's next? Now, while he's doing that, the text goes on and says, when evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. Now, interesting, the wind was against them. It wasn't that uh, Jesus um, uh, said uh, to his disciples that, uh, uh, you know, that there's a, a storm brewing. And so now take your chances crossing the sea. These are the things that just kind of happened. Now, as the wind is blowing against the, the, the boat, Obviously, the sail is down and they're rowing. Uh, in the middle of the night, the text says, uh, early in the morning, which means about 3 a.m., uh, Jesus came walking toward them on the sea. Now, I'll guarantee you, that's something they had never seen before. And I, I guess one of the things that this passage teaches us is that when you surrender your life to God, the unexpected becomes the normal that things we've never seen before or thought about before are likely to happen. And so this says to us, number one, anticipate that and be ready for that. Don't be shocked or frightened or uh, tentative about those things. Understand that that's stuff that happens when you surrender your life and your will to God's control and you start to follow uh, the plan that he has for you. He came walking to them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. There's what I was talking about. So often our response to things that God leads us into that we've never seen before, that we've never thought of before, our first response is fear. Our, our first response is, what are we going to do? How are we going to handle this? There's a sense of panic because the things that are strange, things that are different than we've experienced before, we tend to connect with them as a crisis. This is a, a crisis moment. Moving out of the ordinary for most of us creates a crisis. I want to suggest to you that in recovery, almost all the time, God is moving us out of the ordinary. It's not a crisis, it's just the next thing that he has to, uh, to bring into our lives to develop our character more in terms of wholeness and completeness and recovery. So learn not to first thing, be terrified by seeing something that you've never seen before. And the disciples are an example of, of that. And they were terrified saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. See, their conclusion when they saw this thing that uh, they'd never seen before was to say, it's a ghost. And often we make presumptuous statements about things that we don't understand or that we haven't seen before. It's a ghost, or this is terrible, or what a crisis. And what we discover is we're wrong. It's not those things. Fear makes us see things that aren't there. Fear makes us, makes us uh, come to the place where we are making conclusions about circumstances that we have no experience in. We're not qualified to make the comments. It's a ghost. It's not a ghost. It's Jesus walking on the water. They've just never seen Jesus walk on the water before. And so they make a conclusion. Just wait, before you jump to conclusions about things, just Wait, one of the things that I'm learning through Corona uh, virus time is that this is a tremendous opportunity for me in a lot of different areas. 
things that I've been putting off that I need to that I need to complete, things that I need to I've had the opportunity to do, connections with people that I haven't made in quite a while. I have time now to make them. Ra rather than say this is terrible, no, this actually is an opportunity. This is an opportunity to do just as much teaching as I've ever done before, probably even more, uh, just a different way. It's an opportunity and not something to cause fear. Well, they, they, it's, it's a ghost. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. Now, there's the calming voice of God that says to us, listen, you surrendered your life and your will to my control. Now I'm leading you. Now trust that I know where we're going and just follow. Just let my plan for your life develop. Yes, it's different than anything you've ever been in before, but just trust. Take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. Boy, we need to hear those words as our life continues to develop, continues to change, continues to be uh, challenged by things that we've never seen before, things that we've never thought of before. That's the, that's the big idea of this passage. So Peter answered him, okay, Lord, if it is you, command me to come on the water. In other words, Peter is asking the Lord to do what he thinks is impossible. You know, if it's really you, then why can't I do that too? Now to Jesus, that's not a challenge. That's simply a, well, there's no reason why you can't do that too. Get out of the boat and walk to me. Now, you know, Peter is absolutely certain that this is not something that he can do, which is why the challenge came. And so Jesus challenged him back and said, okay, fine, get out of the boat and walk on the water, come. So Peter got out of the boat and started walking on the water. It's amazing what we discover we can do when we are comp compliant with God's will in our lives. He can restore relationships. He can create humility in our hearts that make us go and make amends to people and to ask for forgiveness and to restore relationships. He can do that. Things that we thought were impossible, he does. And he says, as I'm doing these things and I'm asking you to join me in what I'm doing, don't be afraid. Well, Peter gets out and sure enough, he started walking on the water and he came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind and the water rushing up into his face from the waves, he lost his focus. It says here, he became frightened and he was beginning to sink. Once we move out of the adventure of following Jesus and we start thinking about the the, the um, rationality of our prior experience up until this moment, having concluded all the things that we can and we can't do, and now we discover we're doing something we've never done before, we become frightened and he began to sink. And he cried out to Jesus and said, Lord, save me. And Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Jesus is not impressed or surprised by our limited faith. He's not surprised by our limited ability to move in directions that we've never gone before. And when we find ourselves in uncomfortable areas and we sense we're beginning to lose it, we cry out to him and he says, okay. And he reaches out and says, now let's start again. Let's do this again. Jesus is not the God of the one chance. He gives us chance after chance after chance because he knows that he's leading us in areas we've never been before. The, the reason we're in recovery is because we've never been recovered before. And so as we are recovering and experience new things, it's not unusual for us to get confused, to get, uh, to get frightened, to, to get timid, to, to be limited, and Jesus says, okay, listen, remember, I'm with you. God is with us all the time. And so 
he reaches down and rescues him and says, okay, now let's start over. But he asked me an important question. He says, oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? You know, if you've surrendered your life to me, God says, then why are you doubting in the direction we're moving? What's causing your doubts? Now, again, this is character issues. He's asking us to examine aspects of our character that may be defects that need to be removed. Uh, and, and so th these are opportunities for us to re-examine our surrender. These are opportunities for us to examine our character and see what are the things in us that are going to keep us from following God's will that we need to address. And so rather than being a limitation, this is really a gift. He says to Peter, why, why did you doubt? And I imagine Peter's thought was, well, because this is ridiculous, because I've never seen anybody walk on the water before, because we've, I, I, you know, this is not part of you know, concepts. You know, he's learned through all of his classes in, in school about how, you know, a, a human body is more dense than is water. And when it gets into the water, it, it sinks. It goes right through the water. And so this is, you can't do this unless God is calling you to do this. Now, I don't think he's calling us to walk on the water. I think this is an extreme example to establish a principle that when you begin to follow God's will, he's going to lead you in directions you've never been before, into things you've never thought about before. Trust him, have faith, don't doubt. And then when they got into the boat, the text says, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshiped him saying, truly you are the son of God. When we're able to allow God to lead us, it leads us to a broader understanding of who God is. And it puts us in the position of being able to trust him even more as we follow him day by day by day by day. So in recovery here, the lesson is, as we've surrendered our life to God, expect the unexpected. Expect him to lead you in directions where you've never been before, into ideas that you've never had before, into challenges that you've never had before. Don't be afraid. Understand he is with you. And rather than doubting, have faith that he's going to see you through into the next level of your recovery. What an incredible story. I read this frequently just to keep myself encouraged over the fact that God is with me. And even though he's leading me in places I've never been before, I can trust him and I won't fear, but I'll stay close to Jesus. Let's pray together. Thank you, Father, for our time together tonight. Thank you for these stories in the Bible that teach us such important lessons that we need to hear in recovery. Lord, thank you that you lead us into recovery through a, through a journey that we've never been on before. Give us faith to trust you, to stay close to you, that leads us to worship you and to trust you even more. I pray tonight in Jesus' name. Amen.